Most of us been told that we need to sleep eight hours every night. But what if I told you that obsessing over that number can actually leave you with worse sleep? My name is Nicholas. I'm a sports scientist, physiotherapist, and former professional triathlete. And in this video, I'm going to show you the problem with the eight hour rule and where it comes from, how much sleep you actually need based on the latest research, what to do when life gets busy and you have to choose between sleep and training, and the exact science-backed habits that will improve your sleep to night. So where did the eight hour rule even come from? I used to think that it came from science, but it does not. It actually started with the labor movement. The slogan goes something like this, eight hours for work, eight hours for rest and eight hours for what we will. It's catchy and easy to remember, but not exactly a randomized control trial. So why do we still hear you need to sleep eight hours every night today? It's because it kind of works like an average. Let me explain. An overview of systematic reviews from 2020 found that the available evidence suggests that a sleep duration of seven to eight hours per night is the most favorable associated with health among adults and older adults. But here's the problem. When you tell people that you must sleep for seven or eight hours every night, two things happen. First, it assumes that everyone is average, but the problem with averages is that it does not take anything into account. Your age, your training load, and your life stress all shift your needs. Like if you had a big training session or a big presentation at work, you probably need more. In fact, an expert consensus from 2021 found that a one size fits all approach to sleep recommendations, like the seven to eight hours per night, is unlikely ideal for health and performance. On top of that, a scientific review from 2023 that looked at the impact of sleep on athletic performance found that increasing sleep duration at night or through napping was one of the most effective interventions to improve physical and or cognitive performance. So it might not be the most beneficial for you to follow the general sleep recommendations. And it probably also shifts as you move through different seasons of your life. The second problem with following this strict rule of seven to eight hours of sleep per night is actually quite dangerous. And unfortunately, I've experienced this myself. You see, back when I was a professional triathlete and learned about the importance of sleep, I started to obsess over it. Some nights when I got home late from training, I would lie awake in bed thinking, oh man, it's 11.30 p.m. already. I'm only going to get six hours of sleep. I'm doomed. And then somehow I could not fall asleep. I kept lying there thinking, if I fall asleep now, I'll get five hours. If I fall asleep now, I'll get four hours. But no matter what I did, I just could not get myself to fall asleep. And it turns out I'm not alone. That anxiety is so normal that scientists have a word for it. It's called orthosomnia. So what is that? Well, a scientific review from 2023 puts it like this. Orthosomnia is insomnia-like symptoms while obsessing over perfect sleep. So the very belief that you must get eight hours of sleep per night can actually wreck the thing that you're trying to fix. I'll show you what helped me get over it in a moment, but first let me show you why I even became obsessed in the first place. Because there's some pretty frightening science about sleep. A meta-analysis from 2010 that looked at the impact of sleep duration on all-cause mortality found that sleeping five to six hours or less per night was linked to a 12% higher risk of dying early compared to seven to nine hours. But sleeping nine to 10 hours or more was also linked to a higher mortality. Probably not because sleeping in kills you, but because oftentimes it's a signal of underlying problems. Things like depression, low activity, or chronic illnesses. But it's not just about the hours that we sleep. It's also about the quality of those hours. Quality sleep improves health and performance, but poor sleep, even if you get enough hours, raises the risk of heart disease and general health problems. So what is quality sleep? Well, for you to understand, I have to get a bit technical, but stick with me. As always, I'll try to keep it simple. You see, when you sleep, the body and brain naturally cycle through different stages of sleep. Most people agree that we have three stages of what's called non-REM sleep and one stage of REM sleep. REM stands for rapid eye movement, and it's the part of your sleep 
where we can detect your eyes are moving. Each of the sleeping cycles lasts about 90 minutes and some scientists believe that we need to go through five to six cycles every night, giving us that seven and a half to nine hours again. When I first learned this, I actually started setting my alarm around those 90 minute cycles. So instead of setting it at eight hours, I would set it at seven and a half hours or nine hours of sleep. And I actually found that I woke up feeling a lot fresher. Now, if you want to go deeper on this, I can highly recommend the book Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. But how do you know if you got enough quality sleep? This is where sleep trackers come in and why so many people use them. But it's worth noting that they are probably not that accurate and they come with the risk of orthosomnia that we discussed earlier. So instead of chasing a perfect number, here's what I did and what I still recommend my athletes do to make sure they get get enough high quality sleep. First, just check how you feel during the day. If you wake up without an alarm, you feel alert and you don't crash in the afternoon without four cups of coffee, then you're probably fine. Second, look at your workouts. If your easy runs feel like marathons, then you're probably not getting enough sleep. Third, notice your mood and your focus. If you're irritable or have brain fog or have a poor concentration, those are red flags. And finally, just listen to your body. If you need caffeine just to survive, then you're under recovered. Also, if you're injured, then my experience with the athletes I've worked with and myself is that if we sleep more, then we actually recover faster. But can't you just catch up on sleep on weekends? Not quite. A long sleep helps a bit, but chronic sleep debt changes your hormones, slows your recovery, and messes with your metabolism in ways that a single Sunday nap can't fix. But what if you feel fine on five hours of sleep? Well, research shows that for most people, that's not the case, even if they believe it themselves. So if you're in doubt, just try to sleep some more and see if it helps. If it does, then you're probably not fine and you could benefit from getting a few extra hours of sleep. So what can we do to make sure that we get some quality sleep? First of all, I think it's important not to overcomplicate things. Even though social media sometimes wants us to believe that we need this crazy evening routine just to sleep well, then in my experience, it's actually quite simple to get some quality sleep. It's not easy, but it's simple. Here's the five things that will probably move the needle the most. First, go to bed and wake up at consistent times. Then, if you can, get some sunlight in your eyes for 10 to 30 minutes every morning. Make sure to cut screens before bed. Read a book or talk to your family. You don't need your screen for the last hour before your bedtime. Trust me, if you just do that, it will make a huge difference. Then keep your room cool and dark and avoid caffeine after 12 p.m. if you can. Some studies point to not having more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day, but in general, the less the better when it comes to your sleep. On top of that, things like not eating for three to four hours before you go to bed and not training hard at night has also been linked to higher quality sleep. And if you have a high training load or you're going through a stressful period, then just budget for a bit more time in bed. But what if life gets busy? Should you skip a workout or skip an hour of sleep? Picture this, it's 12 o'clock at night when you go to sleep and you have to be at work at eight. Now you have a choice. Should you get up at six so you can squeeze in a workout before you go to work or should you get up at seven and get that extra hour of sleep? Which do you choose? This particular question has bugged me for years because the truth is sometimes we just don't have the time to get all the hours of sleep we need and get our workouts in. And if you're anything like me, it's tempting to think I'll just skip 30 minutes or one hour of sleep and get that workout in in the morning. But what does the science say? First, sleep over a longer period of time is a non-negotiable. When you cut your sleep short, even by 30 minutes or an hour, the effects pile up over time. Your body doesn't recover as well, your hormones get thrown off, your brain slows down, and you're more likely to get injured. So if you're already running low on sleep, then the smartest thing to do is to get your rest. Second, exercise is powerful, but it's not free. Even a short workout can improve your mood and improve the quality of your sleep. But if you're already stressed and exhausted, then pushing your body harder can backfire, leading to worse sleep, 
poor recovery and higher chance of injury. And third, context matters. If it's just for one night, then skipping on an hour of sleep to get your workout in can be totally fine. But going for a hard interval session when you're already tired, that's a big strain. Then it's better to rest and save it for another day. And if you decide to train super hard right before you go to bed instead, then that can actually make it harder to fall asleep. So here's the bottom line. If you have to choose, then lean towards sleep if you're already tired. If you're feeling good, it does not happen that often, then it could be totally fine to get your workout in and miss that hour of sleep. But don't make cutting sleep a habit. Energy, recovery, and consistency always matters more than a single workout. So do you need to sleep eight hours every night? No. You need enough good quality sleep for your brain and your body to adapt to its circumstances, and those will change over time. The truth is, obsessing over a single number is probably worse than just being a little bit under it. But having a hard time falling asleep and getting enough quality sleep could also be because of something called a high allostatic load. And to learn what that is, and more importantly, how to avoid it, then you should check out this video next.